Hello everyone, it's Jack from Visual Effects. So today is my second ever request to explain the displacement in Redshift. I've kind of not been doing as much tutorials on Redshift just because I've kind of moved away from it a bit as well, just because it's I've been trying to get like super super photorealistic renders and I've been quite struggling because you get a plastic look on like highlights that I'm kind of struggling to get rid of. But um, if anybody's got any tips, then um, definitely drop them in the comments. Kind of like Redshift look because it's, it's pretty exclusive. Let's just set up this texture quickly. Right, so that's the um, texture setup. So let's just um, throw that into the render engine now. And let's just set up a light. This isn't going to be realism. So for anybody interested, um, it's the new red gravel texture. So looking through the viewport, it looks rubbish, obviously. So we need to add the redshift object tag. And then we go to geometry override and displacement I know this is obviously early stages but you can tell this plastic look thing that's going on here now um, so the actual request was what do some of these things mean the one that the, the, which ones are kind of important let's start with minimum edge length in simple terms it's just the lower the number the more detail and edge length is measured more in pixels and subdivision is measured more in polygons what I'd say that this is useful for, which might put in more context, is if you're far away from the scene, you could ramp this number up, set a keyframe, and then as you get closer in and you want to see more detail, lower this number. So let's move on to maximum subdivisions. So subdivisions are simply the amount of polygons on your mesh. Just showing you as an example, um, this is a low poly subdivision, so 10 by 10, and then by increasing the number, you increase the amount of polygons, so in this example, 50 by 50. More subdivisions means more detail. So it's, it's a bit confusing because this is just like a random value. 1, or just times it by 4. 2, or times it by 16. Then it will be 64, then 256, and so on. So the bigger the number, the more detailed. So for rocks and stuff, for ground, you're probably going to want that to be at least 6 plus, which is past 4K. Maximum displacement is how high do you want anything with this, this same tag to be in your scene? I never want this object to be any bigger than 150 centimetres tall. So now that's only using the value of 1, but it's saying that I've got a limit of 150. So now you can see it's kind of bumping up that map. Let's just move the light up a little bit so we get just a little bit more representation of what the texture actually is. It's a bit dark. So this one's going to be a hard one to demonstrate. Limit out of frustrum tessellation. So just change the wording. It's a shame you actually can't. This just pretty much means if it's not in the camera, it's not going to um, tessellate or displace as much, saving render times and stuff like that. We, we have to turn it on. Again, we have the same concept as this max and out of tessellation factor. So if we have Zero, if we set that to zero, it's not doing any optimization at all. And then the higher that we make this number, as soon as we're out of shot, it's it's going to start kicking in. To show that it's working, we've set that to a 10. We can come out of this and it does a render within 239. If we turn this off and reduce it down to zero, slightly longer render times not massive because there's only one texture but that can start adding up as well so that's all that that means let's see these um 
the edge length and subdivision in action. So that's a render with four and six, but if we reduce this down to two, we can see more tessellation. Let's reduce that down. So you can see now it's the edges of, because we're quite low on that edge length, we're getting really sharp edges on rocks because we've got a, a much tighter pixel density on the way that the image is pulled up on the plane. Um, and then increasing the max subdivisions again will add more detail to the rocks. So if we take a snapshot of that, so before, after. Obviously the lighting is vile as well, so you can't really see as the detail as much, but you can definitely see sharper looking rocks and deeper because of that. But to compensate, if we liked that look, but didn't like the detail as much, we could just knock the displacement scale down to about 1.5 and get a more balanced look. So it's kind of between that one and that one. Looks quite nice. So hopefully you found it kind of useful and you kind of understand that you can actually use these to your advantage as well in terms of render time. So the a quick summary is minimum edge length, pixel density of the map being pulled up, maximum subdivision, the amount of polygons, the plane's got to pull up the detail, this out of camera tessellation so as soon as it's out to camera it will reduce it by whatever you've set it to providing limits ticked maximum displacement the height limit that you set for that texture and then we've got displacement scale how high we want everything on the texture to be pulled up like that enable auto bump mapping if you've got a normal map, sometimes you might want to turn this off because it adds extra details that are a bit naff. But again, this really depends on the textures that you've got and the sort of kind of look that you're going for. If you're going for like a cartoon, that might be nice, but most Redshift scenes, I think I tend to put it, keep it on. But yeah, hopefully you found this useful and a bit different. It's a bit more of a information tutorial. And it was the second one requested, so if you do have a tutorial that you want me to do, just uh, drop a message. If I know anything about it, I'll do it. If I don't, then I might be able to find a link to something that does exist. So, yeah, thank you, and I'll see you on the next one.